I recently graduated as a geologist, and I chose it because um, I love the vari variety that you can both be in the field and in the in the laboratory, and you can also get to write some scientific reports, and that's really what I like about it. And I didn't um, regret my choose choice. Um, yes. So now I'll start. And I will talk about geological field observations, and we will see how we can see what is oldest and what is youngest. Um, and I will base it on okay, the study of uh, the mountain Satan. Um, but to uh, explain this, I will uh, have to uh, say something about a Danish geologist called uh, Niklas Deno who lived in the 17th century from 1638 to 1686. He came up, he was a geologist and he um, worked within many fields actually. He both was um, worked in geology, he worked within anatomy and also he, um, he uh, at a later point became a bishop. <laughs> so he tried a lot of things but the reason that I want to introduce him is that he came up with four geological principles that I will introduce to you now, and I will go uh, through them one by one. So the first principle is here. It's called the law of superposition. Um, what is important with this is that the layer in the base is the oldest and the layer in the top is the youngest and um, you see the in between the layers we have we have the yellow layer and we have a brown layer and in between we can have um, what is called the hiatus and that is when we have either no deposition from a time span or we have no um, or, or we had erosion of some sediments that used to be there. Um, yeah. And we have, that is a very usual thing within our geological column that we have layers that, that never were deposited or that uh, were eroded away at a later point. Um, we can also, this that we know that the base is the oldest and the top is youngest, that would uh, say something about the relative age of um, the layers, yes. So now we'll see an example here. It's a, a photo from the southernmost island of the Faroe Islands. It's called Suderoy, and uh, we can see layers here. It's quite hard to see, but we see them here, here. And based on the law of, of superposition, we would say that the layers in the base, they are the oldest, and the layers in the top, they are the youngest. So that's the relative age of the geological uh, column we have in this area. Now we move on to the next. <clears throat> so this is the second principle that Nicolas Dino came up with. Um, it is based on that um, it's called the principle of original horizontality. And we can also say that at first the layers were horizontal and now they are, um, they are um, uh, tipped uh, by some reason. But still we have the oldest layer in the base and the youngest layer in the top. Um, and we have also hiatuses, hiatus in between the layers. Um, yeah, so now I will show you an example again. So what is important before I show you the example, it is that this layer is used to look like this, but now it looks like this. The example I'll show you is here, it's the same photo, but now you have to um, uh, see that the layers here, they actually dip towards the ocean. They go down towards, and some of them even disappear here. If you go to the next slide, 
here. You can see it more clear because I did draw it. So if we imagine that the this layer it continues under the water and this would continue like this under the water. But at one point a long, long time ago in the beginning, um before it was tilted, it actually I don't know if you can see it, but it was horizontal as the principle says, original horizontality. And now the frame I um <laughs> moved it. So now these lines are horizontal. And of course the water level would be different if we tipped it <laughs> in reality. But um this is just to illustrate what happened that the um the column changed. So on the Faroe Islands, um as you can see, many of the rock layers they are tipped towards the east, um and the angle of the, uh, that they're tipped it varies a lot. Um yeah. Now we'll go to the third principle that Nicolas Dino came up with. It's called principle of lateral continuity. Um, it um, what we see here again is the same model as before. We have the oldest in the base, and we have the youngest in the top. But now we have some areas where there are no sediments or there are no rocks. We have these areas here where we have no sediments or rock. So the question is, I don't know if you want to answer it, but but did there always used to be no rocks here? If you have some suggestion, you're welcome to answer. Um, at one point before this process started of erosion, there was there used to be rocks. So if I draw, it used to look like we used to have the layers here as well, but that's a long time ago. And in, me, in the meantime, erosion did happen, happen um, and many things can cause erosion. It can be both um, water running by, it can be uh, ice, if you have a, lice, uh, a large ice um, coming by, it can erode a lot and take a lot of stones and sediments with them. And also if we have just wind flowing by all the time, it can also erode. So that is um, that is the assumption of this princi principle of lateral continuity. Here, now I'll also show you an example. This is the view from my office that I wanted to show you in the beginning, but now you see it here instead. We have um, an island over here. We have another island here. It's quite hard to see. Then we have the island that uh, we are located on at the moment. Um, in between the islands, we have water. And it's actually, I don't know how deep it is, but there's, uh, it's quite deep. Um, so we have a lot of water in between the islands, and this isn't how it always used to be. At one point, as I mentioned before, there used to be rocks in between, and the same we can we would if we go far far back, we would see the same layers in between the island that that I am located on and the island to the left and to the right. So actually, this area that is um covered with the um, white and red uh, stripes. It used to be land and the whole area uh, of the Far Islands and beyond the Far Islands used to be one big plateau of uh, bas basalts. Um, but that is a long time ago and since then a lot of erosion happened which created these islands. Yeah, so that was the Third principle, now I'll move on to the fourth and the last principle before I continue with the mountain that I actually wanted to talk about. <laughs> so this principle is called the principle of cross-cutting relationships and it um, 
kind of disagrees with the first principle, but I will explain you what the meaning is with this principle. First, before I go into more detail, I will explain briefly what, what a sill and a dike is. This is so you can better understand the principle. This is a, a animation or a sketch that I found. Um, we see, here we see layers, it may be sand and some um, clay and some sand again. And we have this here, it's a large magma source where we have some um, uh, activity. And when the pressure gets too high, it can shoot up through the layers if there's a weak point in the layer, and we may get a dike. This is a dike. And a dike, what uh, characterizes a dike is that it cross cuts layers. So it doesn't follow them, but it cuts through. And a dike can be fairly easy to recognize in the nature if you're out in the field and you look, and because it, uh, it is different from the other. But when you have a sill, like this is, it's a sill, it follows the layering of the um, geological column. So it is much more difficult to recognize. And sometimes you may even have to take some sample and analyze it further down to uh, know if it's a sill or it's a dike, to know the actual age of um, the, this sill. So this is just a short introduction to so you know what a dike and sill is. Now I'll get back to the principle of cross-cutting relationships. So now we have still, we have the yellow layer in the base that is the oldest, and we have the youngest in the top, the gray. But we have had some intrusions here. Two dikes. One here, it goes through all the layers, and one here that goes through a part of the layer. And what cross-cutting relationship is, it is that um, if something is cutting through something else, it must be younger than, than the, the layers that it cuts through. So for instance, this layer must be younger than all of the layers. So can you tell me if you have an idea what layer or which unit of the, these one, two, three, four, five, six units, which came after the thick brown unit? Do you know that? Maybe you can have a guess, then I will tell you. <laughs> um, so we'll move on to the next. Here we see this, the base, the yellow, is the oldest. Then we have the thick brown layer, number two. It's the second oldest. And then we have this dike here, it's number three. And that's because it only cuts through number layer number one and two, and not number four. So number three must be um, younger, older than number two. And no, no, sorry, now I'm confused. N number three must be younger than number two, but older than number four. And numbers, and then we have number four deposited on top of it all, and number five. And then in the end, there's another um, dike coming through it all, and it cuts cuts through all the layers. So this means that it is the, the youngest of them all. Yeah, I hope it makes sense. <laughs> now I will continue. Now I want to um, use the four principles uh, on the mountain, Swartan, um, to explain how we actually can use it in the field when we go and look and to, to um, see what really happened. <clears throat> yeah, but first, maybe you can um, look at this mountain. Um, do you see that um, the layering is going this way and this way? Just observe. And there is some um, rivers 
burning down here and here, and we can also see a river going down here, but with a, a very different angle than the other rivers. Then we have something that goes through here, all the way through. Just have this in mind, and then I will um, um, explain more later on. But first, I will say where the location is of this mountain. Okay. We're located here, Fair Islands. It's in the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean. It's um, located between Iceland, Norway, and uh, Scotland. And um, this is, are the islands. There are 18 of them. And um, the mountain that I want to, uh, the mountain Sartan, that I want to uh, show you is located in the central part of the group. And here we see uh, an aerial photo of the mountain. Yeah. So now we see the same picture again. Um, I don't know. I hope you gave it some thoughts that I mentioned the river valleys and that something was uh, going down through here. So I'll start with the uh, applying principle number one in this area. And if you remember, it was the principle of law of superposition. Um, so from this principle, we will assume that the layers in the base, they're the oldest, and the layers in the top, they're the youngest. That's quite simple. So now we'll continue and apply principle number two which is the principle of original horizontality. And as I told you before, uh, all of our islands are tilted, um, and which means that this mountain is also tilted. It might be quite difficult to see, but we can follow layers and they go further and further down towards the ocean. So that's because the layers are tilted. And if we go far, far back, they used to be horizontal, as um, the principle suggests that they should have been. Oh. Now, then I will apply principle number three, which is the principle of lateral continuity. We see this nice mountain, and we have mountains next to it. One to the right and one to the left and in the front and in the back. And we have water also in front. But if we use principle number three, then we must assume that at one point we had no water here and we had no mountain actually because, as I mentioned before, the whole area was one large plateau and it was covered with basalt uh, where we have air at the moment. Yeah, so that's principle number three. And then the last principle is the principle of cross-cutting relationships. Um, I mentioned um, some rivers running down here and here, and then there's this one river that runs down in a different angle. And why is that? <clears throat> that's because um, this actually isn't just a river, it's a river that runs along a um, dike. So, so, um, so it has, um, the dike makes, um, maybe the dike is weaker, so, so, so uh, the river follows the dike and uh, you can see it more easily in the landscape. So this dike cross cuts up to here. And then we have this also that goes through more or less um, horizontal. Um, have you any idea of what this could be? No? It's a sill. <laughs> so so um, that is, this is, uh, can be harder to recognize because it, it doesn't follow the um, uh, horizontal layering exactly but it's more or less following, um, and that's why we will define it as a sill. Now, I will show you, this is the mountain 
satsang viewed from the top and this is um a geolog or or it's also um, a photo of the mountain satsang but we have a geological map on top of it so the um, purple color here that is the sill we saw so that is this sill but just viewed from the top and the um, yellow color lines here that's uh dikes uh, that we have so this line here would be that line here and it actually continues here so we should change this map mm -hmm. <clears throat> i made an animation just to make it even more clear where we um see the dike and the sill <sighs> we have a dike here and that's the same as you see here and the sill goes down here and we have it's uh, two formations we have one rock column called the Merlin's tint formation it's the dark green color and then we have the um, light green color here called the N formation um, which corresponds to the top here so can you tell me um, which of the layers are the youngest from the information that I or from the principles I've taught you through the last 25 minutes? <laughs> Any ideas? Oh yeah, that's a that's a good um, idea or, or a good suggestion, and it might be true, but actually, um, and it could be the youngest, but also. This uh, dike going through here, it could also be the youngest because since it doesn't go through the N formation, we can't actually know if it was um, intruded into the rock column before or after um, the N formation was um, laid out. But N formation is definitely a good suggestion so that's actually it for me today now we will uh, continue with the Kahoot in a little while I'm very I hope you learned a lot but um, if you have any questions maybe we should have them now before the Kahoot <clears throat> you're welcome to ask question number one what did Nicholas Benno come up with red Three new rock types, blue, two types of dino dinosaurs, yellow, four geological principles, green, one mountain chain. Yes, all the answers were correct. <laughs> four geological principles, yes, you can also read about them on our Wikipedia. they're all very concerned. Congratulations. Question number two. What does the law of superposition concern? Red, rock type. Blue, relative age of rock. Yellow, tilted rock layers. Or green, thickness of rock. The correct answer is blue, relative age of rock. Great. Let's look at our scoreboard. So, Nikki, congratulations again. Question number three. What used to be in between areas with rocks integrated in line? Red, always air. Blue, some kind of rock. Yellow, snow or green, water. They're indicated by red line. Well, we had three answers and three different <laughs> answers, and actually the, uh, the right one is same kind of rock, the one. Let's see. Thessaloniki, great again. And question number four out of five, what is oldest on, the, uh, on this image? And red answer, dark green, 
Blue answer, light green. Yellow answer, teal. Or green answer, dyke. So the correct answer was dark green layered. Great, two good answers. We had a bit of a change on our scoreboard. So, last question. What does a geologist do? Red, work in laboratory. Blue, work in the field. Yellow, all the answers are correct. Or green, write scientific reports. answers and yes this is <laughs> all that geologists are occupied with working laboratory working in the field and writing scientific reports so let's look at the podium and so Nikki first place and congratulations to second and third, third place as well as usual we encourage uh, our teachers to give you some tiny awards <laughs> um, so Thank you very much.